1947, in San Francisco, a future celebrity was born in poverty. His name was Ornithal James Simpson and would go on to be a star in the stadiums and car rentals for decades. Sadly, O.J. Simpson was a violent man who would be eventually indicted by the L.A. District Attorney for killing his ex-wife and her friend with a knife. Even though he was eventually found liable for the murders, he was acquitted in what would be known as the trial of the century. Even though some may claim that O.J. was not important to the United States as he had no direct impact on politics, this is not the case as his football skills defined a generation and his trial was one of the biggest cultural events after the moon landing, only being bested by 9-11. Even before the trial, O.J. Simpson was a cultural mainstay as he was a gridiron hero and his decision to ignore a boycott of the 1968 Olympics was his first controversy. He was the first football player to run 2,000 yards in a standard season. He started out on the Buffalo Bills and then joined the 49ers. During his career of 10 years, he was one of the most famous athletes of all time. He was featured selling shoes and comic books, and after his career, he was a spokesman for Hertz Car Rentals. Despite his fame and fortune, it was not all smooth sailing for OJ. He competed in the 1968 Olympics, which may sound wonderful, except for the fact he ignored a boycott from MLK Jr. himself. This painted OJ as a man who cared more about himself than for progressing human rights, which is a pretty big signal for the type of person he became. After he divorced his second wife, he became delusional about winning her back. He tried nearly everything, but he couldn't succeed. On June 13, 1994, Nicole Brown, his ex-wife, and Ron Goldman, her friend, were found stabbed in Nicole's apartment. All evidence pointed to O.J. The O.J. Simpson trial was a cultural leviathan of the year, as it was one of the most popular TV events of all time. And it decreased trust in courts and of public officials for years to come. Right after the juice was indicted for the murders, he was reported to be on the run and was soon spotted in the backseat of a Ford Bronco, whose driver was Al Colings, a former NFL linebacker. At the time, OJ was suicidal, and that caused police to chase not to try to catch OJ for fear of him shooting himself. The resultant chase was at a breakneck speed of 35 miles an hour. This event was viewed by 95 million Americans, which is more than that year's Super Bowl and all Super Bowls until 2008. One reporter likened the amount of helicopters in the sky to the film Apocalypse Now. Another helicopter followed the chase for so long that it ran out of fuel. The trial also impacted American culture for years to come after the acquittal. Distrust of defense attorneys specifically decreased greatly following the trial. This is because the defense saw a good defense attorney as a person who makes murderers go free. At the end of the trial, a large percentage of Americans thought OJ was guilty, as DNA evidence showed that he did it. But because of his stellar defense team with big-name lawyers like Robert Shapiro and Johnny Cochrane, especially the latter's famous phrase, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit, convinced the jury that OJ was innocent. They did not, however, convince much of the American public and made many Americans lose faith in the justice system. The trial also made Americans lose faith in the police. This is because the police chief, Mark Furman, was accused of planting evidence on crimes with African-American suspects. And, as he pleaded the fifth, many Americans rightly assumed the worst. While O.J. Simpson did get off the hook for murder, he was found liable in a civil court for Nicole Brown's and Ron Goldman's death. Eventually, even this cultural titan fell on hard times and made a book titled If I Did It, Confessions of a Killer, which was a shockingly detailed accounts of events of the murder, if O.J. did do it, such as him saying he just wanted to scare Nicole. Like all great heroes, O.J. eventually met his match against his opponent, this being prostate cancer. He died just this year at the age of 76. O.J. should be remembered for the good times when he was a star football player, 
but he should be most famously remembered as a potential murderer who changed America forever and thus should be inducted into the prestigious A. Push Hall of Fame.